So this is a cool little project for picking random choices. Now we have this text area and as soon as I start to type, like I'll say choice one, and you'll see it'll format down here as like a tag. And to create another choice, I just need to put a comma and start to type again, say choice two, another comma, choice three, choice four, obviously I can do as many as I want. And then as soon as I hit enter, it's going to give us this cool little effect and it's going to stop on a random choice. It's also going to clear the text area. All right. So if you just need a, if you need some little helper to help you make a choice between however many items, however many objects, I mean, you could do numbers here. And it's just going to stop on a random one. Okay, so that's what we'll be creating. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's get started on our random choice picker. So I have my project starter here. I'm going to go ahead and just change the title here to random choice picker. And let's go down here. So we're going to have a container. We can get rid of the H1. Let's put a class of container here and inside the container we'll have an H3 and let's say enter all of enter all of the choices divided by a comma. Go ahead and just specify what a comma is. <laughs> Florin. And then let's do a line break here and then we'll say press enter when you are done. All right, so under the H3, let's put a text area. And this is going to have an ID. We'll call text area real creative. And let's have a uh, we don't need this stuff here because we're going to style it with CSS and then we don't need a name. I do want a placeholder, though, so let's say placeholder. And we'll go ahead and set that to enter choices here dot dot dot. Now under the, the text area, we're going to have an area for the tags. So we'll give this an ID of tags. And the, the these are going to be spans with the class of tag and obviously with some text of the different choices. But this is going to get inserted with the JavaScript. However, for now, I'm just going to hard code it just so we can see it and style it. So we'll just create a tag here. Let's say choice one. We'll just add three of these. So we'll do two three and save. Okay, so that should do it for the HTML. Let's jump into our CSS and let's so font family. We'll just we'll keep Roboto. That's fine. Let's add a background color. Background color is going to be hexadecimal value 2B88 F0, which is a blue color. And we have uh, display flex and flex direction column center. That, yeah, that, so that, all this is fine. So now the H3, let's give that a color of white because it's on that blue background. And let's also just add a little bit of margin. We'll do 10 pixels, 0, 20 pixels for the margin. You know what? Let's change the font to Molly. So CSS question mark family equals Molly and let's go right here in the body and change this. There we go. So that's a little bit more readable. And then for the container, we'll set a width of the container to 500 pixels and actually, yeah, that should do it. So we have a 500 pixel container. Um, let's do the text area. So that has a class of text area. And I want to get rid of the border. So we'll say border none. And let's make this a block level element. So display block. And we're going to set the width to 100% of its container, which is not working. And that's because I gave it an ID of text area. So we'll just we'll just style the text area. So just take away that dot. There's no class. Um, the height of this is going to be 100 pixels. 
and let's inherit the font family of Mully. And then let's add some padding, we'll do 10 pixels padding. And as far as margin goes, we'll do 0, 0, 20 pixels. And then let's make the font size a little bigger, 16 pixels. And then, then that should be good for the text area. Now for the tags, so we have spans with the class of tag. And we're going to add a background color. So background color is going to be F0932B. It's going to be the background. And the color of the text is going to be white. And we're going to add a border radius of three pixels. And I'm sorry, not three pixels, 50 pixels. And padding. We'll do 10 top and bottom, 20 left and right. And let's spread them out a bit. So we'll add margin. Let's do 0, top, 5, 10, and 0. And the font size, I'm going to make 14 pixels. Make that a little smaller. Let's display as inline block. And yeah, so that should do it. Now, when it selects, uh, you know, when it selects something at random, it's going to have a background color. So we'll have, in addition to tag, it'll have a class of highlight. And I just want to change the background color to hexadecimal value 273C75. And just to see what that looks like, let's say the second one here, we add highlight. And the highlighted one will look like that. Okay, so that's it for the user interface here. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll start to add our JavaScript. All right, so in this video, we want to create our tags. We want to be able to type in here and split by a comma and create tags below. So one thing I want to do in the CSS, though, is on the H3, I'm just going to add a text align of center just to center that. I think that looks a little better. And then in our script file, we want to get the tags element, which is this right here, this div with the ID of tags. So let's call this tags L and set that to document dot get element by D. And we want the ID of tags. And then I also want the text area. So we have an ID of text area and let's call this text area. And those are the only two things you want to bring in. So then I want to automatically focus on the text area. So we're going to call the focus method, which if we go to the page, it'll automatically put the cursor in there and we can start typing. Now we want an event listener on the text area. So add event listener and we want to listen for a key up. So you have key down and key up. We're listening when you when you press down and then you let go, that's going to fire this off. And when that happens, pass in our event parameter here. When that happens, we're going to call a function called create tags and we want to pass in e dot target dot value, which is going to be whatever we type in. So if we create a function called create tags, say input and we console log the input, if we go down here and we open up our console and I start to type, you should see what we type down here. All right. Now, the way we're going to do this is we want to take whatever whatever we type in and then we put a comma. We want to split at that comma and create an array of you know whatever is on either side of these commas. So this would create an array with this as the first value. This is the second. We can do that using split. So let's say const tags and let's set that to input, which is a string. We want to split it by the comma and turn it into an array. So now if I console log here tags and I go and I say let's just put a one in here. Whoops. What happens? <laughs> Spit is not a function. So split if I put a one. You can see we have an array with one value of one, which is a string. If I put a two, it's going to just be an array with a 12. But if I put a comma and then a two, then we have an, of an array with two values, one and two. 
So it's going to split it by the comma. Now, I don't want to be able to have space like that. So what we'll do is add on to this dot filter. And filter is also a high order array method that allows you to um, return certain things based on a conditional. So we'll say for each tag, let's say tag dot trim, which will just trim off any white space. If that is not equal to an empty string, then we'll return that. And then we just want a map, which will just manipulate the array. So for each tag, we want to return an array with the tag, but we want to trim. So we're just saying it can't be an empty string. Also, we're going to trim any white space. So now if I save that and I do one space, you can see that it's not actually added. The space isn't in there. And I can put comma two space and the space is not added in there. And if I just do like comma and then another comma, it doesn't add another. It doesn't do anything because of our filter. All right, so now that we've established that, let's get these tags put into our HTML. So we'll get rid of that and let's take the tags element and clear it. Otherwise, they're just going to pile up. So before we do anything, we'll just clear that and then we'll take our tags, which is an array and we want to loop through oops, with for each for each. So for each tag, let's create a tag element with document dot create element and we want to create a span. We also want to add a class to that. So let's take the tag element and let's class list dot add class of tag. And then we want to set the the inner text of that. So we'll take the tag element and set the inner text to whatever the tag is because we're looping through it here. We get each one and we're going to put that as the inner text. And then finally, we want to take the tags element. So make sure you have the S here. This is the the ID of, you know, the div with the ID of tags. And we want to append child and we're going to add each of those tag elements in. So if I go ahead and I do hello, so it starts to type down there as a tag. If I do a comma and I put in world, that's going to be the second tag. So it's going to separate it by the commas. All right. So we have the ability to create these tags. What we want to do next is have the ability to hit enter and then have it randomly select and it's going to highlight and it'll give that cool little animation as well. So we'll do that in the next video. OK, so we're able to create our tags here with commas. Now we want the random select functionality. So in our event listener, let's check to see if we hit enter. So we'll say if and then on this event object, we have a key property and we're going to say if the key is equal to enter. All right. Now, if we hit enter, we're going to call a function called random select, which we haven't created yet. I also want to clear the input. So we're actually just going to wait a couple milliseconds before we do that. So in the set timeout, we'll pass in an arrow function and we just want to wait 10 milliseconds and then clear the input value with e dot target dot value. And we're just going to set that to nothing. All right. So let's create random select down here function random select. And for now, we'll just console log one, two, three. And if I open up my console and, you know, I can type stuff down here and then enter, then you see it fires off that function and it also clears this up here. Now, in the random select, we're going to go ahead and set a value of times and I'm going to set that to 30. And what this represents is the number of times it's going to highlight each one before it stops. So, you know, it'll go one, two, three, four, and it'll go to 30 or whatever you put this to. Um, and then we're going to have we're going to have to set an interval because this is going to repeat this highlight of each one, the highlight and the remove of highlight of each one. So let's create a variable called interval. And we want to use the set interval function. So for the uh, for the time here, we want this to happen, let's say every 100 milliseconds. 
And what we want to happen is we want to pick a random tag. So let's say const random tag and set that to a function called pick random tag. And before we move on, we'll create that. So let's say function pick random tag and we want to take all the tags so we can use document dot query selector all and we want to get all the elements with the class of tag, which will be all these all of these all the spans. And then to get a, a random one, let's return. And we're going to return tags. So tags, we, when we use query selector all, it's a node list that we bring in. So all of these will be put into the node list, which is similar to an array with an index. So the index is going to be random and we'll use math dot floor to round down math dot random, which will give us a random decimal. We just want to multiply that by the length of the tags array or not array, but node list, which is similar to an array. So that'll give us a random tag. Um, I'm also going to create two more functions down here just to highlight and unhighlight. So we'll call this highlight tag and it's going to take in a specific tag element. And then we're going to take that tag element and we're going to just add a class, uh, add a class with class list dot add. And we're going to add the highlight class. And then we want one to remove the highlight. So we'll call this unhighlight tag and we're just going to remove instead of add like that. Okay, so now back up to here. So we have this interval that's going to fire off every 100 milliseconds. It's going to pick a random tag and then we want to highlight that random tag. So highlight tag. Pass in our random tag. Um, and then we want to unhighlight. So I'm going to have a set timeout here, which is going to take in a function and we're just going to wait 100 milliseconds here to unhighlight. OK, so in here we'll say unhighlight tag and I want to pass in our random tag. So with this, if I were to create my tags and then hit enter, You can see what's happening every 100 milliseconds. It's highlight. It's picking a random tag to start at and then it's highlighting a random tag and then 100 milliseconds after it's unhighlighting. So that's just going to keep going forever right now. All right. So I'm just going to reload to stop that. And now what we can do is go under. Uh, let's see. So function, we still want to be within our random select, but we want to go down here and I'm going to have a set timeout with a function and I want this to run after whatever the times is. I want to multiply that by 100 milliseconds. So the 30 here multiply that by whatever the time this is, which is 100 milliseconds. Okay, uh, we could even put that we could put that in a separate variable if we wanted to. Um, but anyway, we want to clear our interval. So when you have an interval that runs, there's a method uh, function called clear interval to stop it. So we want to pass in our interval. Then we want to pick a random tag to stop on. So let's create let's do a set timeout. And this is going to be 100 milliseconds. And inside the set timeout, I want to get a random tag. So once again, we'll create a random tag and set that to pick random tag. And then we want to highlight it. So let's say highlight tag and pass in our random tag. Okay, so this up here is ca is causing that, you know, shifting it to each one, highlighting and unhighlighting after a certain amount of time. And then this takes care of stopping it and just picking a random tag to land on and highlight. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's do one, two, three, four, five. You know, these can be numbers or strings or whatever you want to put in here. Let's do up to 10. And then I'm going to hit enter. So it should run 30 times and then it's going to stop on a random tag or in this case number. But of course, it can be anything. 
and let's try that again, the same thing, which we did one through 10 and hit enter. So it landed on three last time. Now it lands on one. All right, so you have choice one, choice two, choice three, hit enter. And it's just a cool little application to pick a random choice. All right, so that's it.